Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know... It's me. Sorry about that, guys. Hello, podcast land. Hello, guys. How are we doing today? I am so super excited today. I got some news to tell you. And I'm going to open this up just because this is some of the biggest news. And I've already opened it up, so we're not opening it up live fresh on the show. Let me go grab this for just a second right in front of me. Now, this is something you don't want to get coffee stain or Coke stain or any kind of stain on this for whatever reasons you want to. Because guess what? It is very important. So no stains. (laughs) (laughs) So while we are here, how are we all doing today? I'm going to open this up with you live on the show. It's already been opened, opened, but officially opened. But I'm going to open with this to you live on the show. And I'm going to let you know what this is. And wow, this costed $5.15 to ship. Wow, I didn't know it was costing that much. And here she is, guys. This, obviously, you will not be able to see right away. I might see if I can share this on the podcast page. I'm going to talk to my buddy, Dr. Scott. But I got my original, because see, when, I'll tell you in a minute what it is. When my land, when I had a landlord back in the day, when I was renting my studio apartment before I met my wife, my landlord threw everything away that I had, only because I was not occupying my space. I paid my rent, and yes, I was living there, but one of my good friends, Miss Charlene, was on drugs and alcohol, was on drugs, I should say, heroin to be exact. And when she was on heroin, me and my friend Steve then. We're trying to get her off of heroin. And it worked. I mean, thankfully, when we were there, we were there because at one point, Steve goes, we got to get upstairs. He goes, I don't know what's going on, but something is telling me that she's in trouble. We need to get up there. So we didn't hear nothing. We didn't see nothing. We just knew from downstairs we need to get upstairs. So we ran upstairs, and there she was lying face first in a plastic bag, sleeping because she was so high. That if if she would have stayed there, she would have suffocated and died. So thankfully, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise on that note. Thank you, Lord, that you let us know what was going on at that moment and that we could help you save her because ultimately, God, you did it, not us. And so we, we helped her and she got off, but my landlord said I wasn't occupying my space. They apparently threw me out, even though I paid my rent, threw me out, said I'm not occupying space on the little pink note that I got. And all my chaplain stuff was tossed away. Everything that I owned, everything that I owned was thrown away. But I got some stuff. I got something back that I've been wanting to get back for many, many years. And it's my original Destiny Christian University Associate's Degree. And it's in big white paper, and it's, this thing is phenomenal, and it just looks wonderful. My Destiny Christian University Associate's Degree, this certifies that the, that the Board of Religious, the Board of Regents of Destiny Christian, Destiny Christian... They got fancy writing that I can't read. Something here. This certifies that the Board of Ed, Board of Board of Regents of Destiny Christian Una Oh H. I can't read that word. H I N B E R S I T Y. 
Oh, it's a V. So this certificate, this certifies that the Board of Regents of Destiny Christian University of Florida, with recommendation of the family of the facility and administration, has hereby conferred and granted a Christian degree upon Andrew Kuslick with all the rights, privileges, and honors thereunto appreciating or A-P-P-E-R-T-A-I-N-I-N-G Associates of Worship Arts in in witness here of the seal of the school and the signature of its only authoritative officers and proper officials are here to A-F-F-I-X-E-D, affixed. So, granted from worship, from Winter Hagen, Florida, on June 8th of 2019, Destiny Christian University. Uh, President Dean Dr. Rose, Dr. Rose, Dr. Cheryl Piscopo, So it's it's my it's my official degree, and this was back then. And see, when back then, when uh, whenever we had gotten degrees, we were affiliated out of Winter Hagen, what is it, Winter Hagen, Florida. Now these associates degrees that you get from the Evangelical Christian Churches I used to attend, now they're accredited through Michigan. But I was the original when they got when they were accredited through Winter Winter Hagen, Florida. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a picture of this for a second and show my wife something because she's got to see this. So I'm going to take a quick picture. Where is it? There it is. So how are we doing today? And what is up in your lives? And like I said before, like I said before, that is when they were given Accredited out of Winter Hagen, Florida. That means I am an original. So how are you all doing today? What is up in your lives? I'm so excited to be sharing this exciting news with you about my associate's degree. And I got to thank my buddy, Dr. Scott. I've got to thank him wholeheartedly for everything that he has done for me and for helping me get this back. But this does, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, make me excited because I now got something back that I worked hard for. And believe me, when when people say going to school is not easy, it's not. You should have seen some of the homework I had to do during my studies. It wasn't easy, but my buddy Tom helped me along. My buddy Tom Evans back in the day encouraged me. Another friend of mine who played the Henry Dulcimer 
one of the coolest ladies. She she got into an accident, became brain dead, and still could function. She played the Henry Dulcimer, but she still had moments of where she just you know didn't know something, and she was cool. She she helped me go through, and my friend from Liberties, one of the lady friends there that uh, helped me, and I can't remember her name, but she encouraged me to go on. And then Fran said, Andrew, she goes, you're, you're, you're a testimony to everyone around here. I go, why is that, Fran? She goes, because. She goes, you are disabled mentally, but you did something extravagant. and did something that is, uh, you, you, you pushed the envelope, basically. You did something that no one else is going to do in their lifetime because, number one, people that are disabled want to stay that way. See, I might be disabled, but I don't exactly want to stay that way. I want to improve myself. So I went and got me a degree. Now, does that mean that I'm better than I used to be? Of course not. I'm never going to be the same. Did I? I'm always going to be the same. I'm going to be disabled. Yes, I'm going to be disabled. And people say, well, why can't God heal you? He healed me of this and this and this. Why not you? I'm going to be disabled for the rest of my life because this is my testimony. Sometimes God doesn't heal somebody or take something away from somebody. And I tell my wife this all the time. I said, hon, I said, why can't I have one normal day? Because if I had one normal day, then my testimony would be nothing. Even if it's just one day, my testimony would be absolute nothing. Because then I would have been normal for one day and known everything. And do I really want that? No. Because how can I be a testimony to somebody? I'm disabled for a reason. God made me this way for a reason so I can be a testimony to other people who are going through this. So if you're going through this, just just remember, this guy here, Chaplain Andrews, is going through the same thing you're going through. And yes, I'm disabled, but I don't let them determine who I am. I don't sit there and say, well, I'm disabled and I'm this. And See, here, here's, a, here's something I want to say. And... I know I talk about my sister sometimes on the show. I'm going to talk to my, I'm going to talk about my sister, for a minute. And I preached the word once, and I gave an example where she eats and she eats and she eats things she's not supposed to. She's doing a little bit better on that, but she eats and she eats and she eats, and then she gets heart problems and she lies on the floor and she goes, "Help! I hurt! I hurt! You gotta help me! I'm a heart patient." Number one thing. I don't ever say I am. I don't ever say. Uh, see, I don't. I say that I'm disabled like that, but I don't let that determine who I am. Just because I'm disabled, yes, I use the word I'm disabled as in I'm disabled, and I use this as ministry to help other people. But I don't say I'm disabled, and you got to help me because I'm disabled. Oh no, God! God uses my disabilities and my stuttering because sometimes you hear me stutter my disabilities, to minister to other people. And if you're, and I'm not sure if I told you that before, but yeah, I got disabilities, got bipolar, ADHD, ADD, you name it, I got it. I'm borderline schizophrenic. I'm a a functioning autistic, meaning I'm autistic, but I can hold down a job. I can do things in this world, and I can, you know, it's just the way it is. I can do things, and I can function in my job. But, I, but I'm still disabled, and I still have moments, and I'll be honest with the listeners out here, because I'm an open book. And I told these people that at my work, I said, I can function and do my job and do it right. I said, but be aware, there might be times when I'm just spinning in circles, wondering where I'm at, and just that's all I'm doing. So if you ever see that, please let me know. At least take me and sit me down somewhere, and let me just chill for a minute so I can get that you know out of the way because it don't last long but it does I have moments where I just spin in circles and go where am I I don't say all that but I I look confused and spin in circles and yeah I, I've done that before so am I disabled yes but do I let it determine who I am no now can I say it physically 100% that I've actually stood there in one spot and spun in circles not to that extreme of a degree, but I've I've had bits of um, feeling disoriented, like where am I at? What am I doing? And I'm standing there, going, just looking around, going, hmm, what, what, what am I doing here? Now I've done that completely, but I've never technically spun in circles. 
But I've wondered where I was at, what I'm doing, and I questioned myself. I just stood there just, you know, staring off into nothing and going, huh, what am I doing here? How did I get here? Things like that. There's just examples. But I've done that. But do I let them determine who I am? Absolutely not. Why? Because that's not God. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let them determine it because I'm disabled. And you got to this and you got to that with because I'm disabled. I'm like, no, I don't to let that determine who I am. Am I disabled? Yes. But that doesn't determine who this guy really is. And this guy right here, along with those who are listening, unless you're new for the first time, don't know who Christ is, this guy right here is also a child of God. And this child of God happens to have testimonies. There's a bunch of testimonies in my life. I was born completely deaf. And you would never know that because I do a podcast each and every week. Now, can I hear good? Eh, yeah. But imagine sticking your fingers in your ear and trying to hear people. That's what, I, that's what you guys sound like to me when I'm in person and you're talking to me. Now, can I hear? Yeah, I can hear loud sounds. Short sounds, you know, smaller sounds go to the pits. But I can hear some sounds. And so I wear hearing aids. But again, that doesn't determine who I am. That just lets everyone else know that, hey, I'm dealing with some of the issues that you're dealing with. So there's some stuff in my life that I'm going through that I'll always go through. It's just it's just plain facts because that's just the way God created me. He made me this way for a reason. And the reason is testimony. He made you that way for a reason. Mark Lauer used to always say, look at your thumbprint. He goes, that thumbprint is different than everyone else's that makes you. Guess what that does? That makes you thumb buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're unique. That's the only thumbprint in the world. So with that being said, guys, how are we all doing today? I'm so super excited to be here with you on Worship Saturdays. Again, I was at a baby shower today doing a party, and I do tricks, coin tricks, uh, card tricks, simple stuff, stuff that takes sleight of hand and, you know, fake objects like a fake thumb, things like that for different tricks. And I don't do anything real. I would never do any witchcraft or anything like that. But I do tricks that look good, and it, it, it brings joy to someone's day. So I did a party today over at one of my lady friend's uh was doing a baby shower for one of the people at work, and they're all work people, so we knew who they were. So they were doing a baby shower for one of the work ladies who's having a baby, and I did the shower. It was nice. I got money for it. I'm not going to tell you how much I got, but I got money for it, and everyone had a good time. So, hey, it was a true blessing, and she's going to use me again, and I can't say no. So with that being said, we love you. Me and Mrs. TJF love you. God loves you. And guess what? There ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and as I say, why would you want to do something about it? Because you'd be a fool to do something about God loving you. Because then when you, the only thing, and Miss Charlene got me on this. She goes, I go, Miss Charlene, I go, Jesus loves you. I, I said, uh, there's nothing you can do about it. I said, why would you anyways? You'll be a fool to. She goes, oh, there's something you can do about it. I go, what's that, Miss Charlene? She goes, worship him for it. I said, you got me there. So, yes, you can worship God for it. So, you'd want to do the least that about it. So, with that being said, we are here. It is officially Worship Saturdays. Let's get into a few more brief announcements. Starting with number one. Go to community call 222 at gmail.com. Spelled C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D-222 at G-M-A-I-L dot C-O-M. And guess what you can do right there. First off, you can send me all of your prayer requests. Even if you just wanted to shout to you on the podcast, send me your first name, your city, and your state, and I'll shout out to you on TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, guys, be aware that you can call us here at 1-302-448-8443. Again, that's 1-302-448-TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, guys, I want you to be aware that we are going to start this back up 
We are going to start this back up in September, where we're going to be doing Outside of the Classroom Wednesdays again with my new host and friend for a long time, Dr. Scott Mullins. Look forward to the uh, new episodes of Worship Saturday, no, not Worship Saturdays, Outside the Classroom Wednesdays. Hold on just a second. So with that being said, guys, we're going to be doing that again outside the classroom Wednesdays. Also, guys, be fully aware. Hold on. Hold on. My wife just found something. Apparently she found a crack on the ceiling in our room. I can't even see it, so I'm not too worried. Devil back off in Jesus' name. We don't have any authority over that. But, and we're going to be doing this again this week, too. We're going to be doing Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. So, for Outside the Classroom Wednesdays, we at Outside the Classroom Wednesdays take the gospel outside the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. Same thing with uh, the Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays. We take Pastor Lance and Ernesto Travis's messages outside the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. And we're also going to be doing something I like to call the rumble. Back in the day when boxers used to fight, they were what? Rumbling. They were boxing. They were fighting. But the Bible says that we don't rumble or fight against what? Flesh and blood? But our principal is darkness and evil. So we're going to take one day out of the week. We're going to pray, pray, pray. Fight, fight, fight. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Preferably at midnight. Now, why do I say at midnight? Because darkness loves darkness. Let me say that to you again. Darkness loves darkness. Better yet, let me give you a lamest terms, and everyone knows the old saying, misery loves company. And that's the same thing. If you're in a room and you look at your hand in a dark room, can you see your hand? Of course not. Why? Darkness loves darkness. You can't see your hand because darkness is in the room and it collects. Same thing with the, with, uh, the evil in this world. Darkness loves darkness. Misery loves company. As soon as someone's down, what's the first thing the devil does? He comes right at them and says, yeah, you're no good. Yeah, you're a loser. Yeah, you're this. Yeah, you're that. Blah, blah, blah. And he makes you feel so rotten and so terrible that you, you know, think all kinds of weird things. Depression is a serious issue. I used to do something called... Um, what, was the, what was the thing I was doing on Facebook for a minute? It was called Inside the Dry Cleaning Area. And each week I would post a new episode, a new topic to talk about on Inside the Dry Cleaning Area. And one of them was depression. But depression could lead to all kinds of things, suicide, murder. And it can also lead to anger, and anger then leads to the murder. And see, So depression can lead to all kinds of serious things, including, including self-harm. Cutting yourself and even killing yourself. Suicide. But, but, see, here's the thing, though. See, here is the thing, though. It don't have to be that way. That's why Jesus died, so we can get rid of all that junk in our lives. I just totally lost what I was thinking of. But, yes, but see, the first thing that happens when you're down and depressed, the devil comes to talk to you. Yeah, you're no good, you're this, you're that. See, it's the same thing with, with the evil in the world. It collects. 
Misery loves company. And so what we do is when you are in a dark room, can't see your hand because it's dark, what do you start doing? Turn on night lights. Once you turn on night lights, some of that darkness is dispelled into a new room. Once all the lights are on the entire house, there's no darkness in that house. Why? Because all the lights are on. It goes the same way with Jesus. When you display the love and the light of Jesus, then what? Darkness is dispelled. Think about it. The Bible says at the name of Jesus, not at the poof, ta-da, here I am. At the name of Jesus, demons tremble and Satan flees. It also says in the word that if you resist the devil, he has to flee. So there's several scriptures there that you can you can get thou behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. First thing he said, when Peter said to, to Jesus, Peter said, Lord, wherever you go, I will follow, even unto death. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say Peter was an evil person and Peter was bad. Peter had right motives. Peter was sad that Jesus had to go and be crucified. And Peter knew what was going on. Peter had a good motive in his heart, and Peter loved Jesus with all his heart. I agree with that idea. Peter was not the issue. He had a right motive. He had a right heart. But the thing was that Satan spoke through him. And that's why, see, that's why Jesus didn't say, Peter, get thou behind me. No, he says, Satan, get thou behind me. Now, why would he say that to Peter? Because Satan was talking to Peter. And so Peter had a right motive from a right heart and thought it was good to say that, but Satan tempted him to do so, which then which then entailed that what? That uh, Satan was talking through him. So that's why he said, Satan, you get thou behind me in the name of Jesus, or you get thou behind me. Only because Satan was talking to Peter. Now, it doesn't mean that Peter did something, because Peter didn't do anything. Peter was not wrong in what he said. It was wrong to say that, but Peter had a right motive, is what I'm trying to say. His motive was he loved God so much he wanted to go to be with him. Go with him no matter what. But the thing you want to look at is, why did he tell Satan to get thou behind me? Why when Peter said, I will go unto death, even unto death with you, did Jesus rebuke Satan? Simple. Number one, the Bible says that Jesus died between two thieves. Okay, two thieves. One on his right, one on his left. And I believe the one on his right, the one on his left, said, well, if you truly are a son of God, then get us down from here. Huh. You know, he, he had disbelief. The other, the other criminal on the right, I believe it was, says, look, this man has done nothing. And he is dying, and we actually did something, and we deserve our death. So think about it that way. He did absolutely nothing, the second one said, and yet we did what we did. We deserve our death, and he did nothing, and he's still dying. But what did Jesus say to him? He says, "He says from this day, he, first off, the thief goes, look, wherever you go, when you get to where you're going, please remember me. And Jesus said, look, with for, from this day forward, you'll be with me in paradise. Meaning that, meaning that that thief is going to heaven with him. Now, why did I give you that example? Because when Peter said, I'll go even unto death with you, the Bible says he died between two thieves. It doesn't say he died between a thief and one of his disciples, Peter. No, it says that he died between two thieves. So if, so if Satan can cause Peter to die with Jesus then that death of Jesus on the cross that got rid of all of our sins, who, who bore all our sins and took them away, if Peter would have died with them, that would have been null and void. It would not have done, had no effect on anything. We'd all be going straight to hell. Why? Because the word says two thieves. It has to be two thieves, not one thief and Peter, or not Peter and John, or not, you know, John and... You know, Joseph, or whatever the case is. It had to be two thieves. The word would not say something and then contradict itself with something else. He had to die between two thieves. That was the way it was supposed to be. And the way he went out it was supposed to be exactly that. Not a thief in Peter. So Peter had right motives. 
And I guarantee you, Peter had right motives, and Peter's heart was broken because Jesus had to go. His motives were right. He he wasn't trying to do anything wrong or mock God or nothing. He just was sad to see his Savior leave. And so he had a right heart. He thought was right, but then Satan talked through him and said, I'll even go into death with you. And that's where Jesus, instead of rebuking Peter, because technically Peter didn't say it, Satan did through him. He rebuked Satan. Because we wouldn't be where we're at today if it wasn't for that. Because if, well, not just because of that, but if Peter would have died on the cross with Jesus, it would have been all null and void. So, therefore, Peter, well, Satan was rebuked, and then he still died between two thieves. That's the way it was supposed to be, not a thief and then Peter. So, but it's at the name of Jesus that Demons, troubles, Satan, please. So we're going to pray for you, pray for the listener, pray for the president, the government, whoever that may be in the future. We're going to pray for that. Whatever pops up, we will pray for that. So let's pray for this man in the White House. Lord, we humbly come back before you, Lord. We, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are doing what you're doing and that you have him in office for a reason. Yes, Lord, our views on who he is specifically is not to be mentioned here, but you know what our views are, but we thank you anyways that he is doing what he is doing for you. Guide him in all truth. Guide him in what you want him to do, not what he wants to do. Because ultimately, it's not the president who makes America great again, Lord. It is you who make America great again. I ask you to be with him in health and be with him in finance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Boom, boom, boom. Amen. 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 So with that being said, guys, that is the Rumble. Also, guys, be aware, we're going to be doing this again next week. Worship Saturdays. We're doing it now, too. And let me say something to you. Worship Saturdays is not just another podcast episode, in which it is. Worship Saturdays is not just another episode of Worship Saturdays, in which it is. Worship Saturdays is not just another day of the week, in which it is. Worship Saturdays is not just a playlist we play here on the show, in which it is. Worship Saturdays is a phenomenon. Doop, do, 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 do. Phenomenon. Doop, do, do, do. Phenomenon. Doop, do, 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 Phenomenon. Wee, 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 wee. I can't sing, but you know what? It don't matter. The Bible says make a joyful noise, and that noise was extremely joyful. At least I enjoyed it. So Worship Saturdays is going to be a phenomenon. Everyone's going to come to listen to Worship Saturdays. With that being said, that is Worship Saturdays. We just play a selection of playlist. Grab your favorite drink, relax in your lounge chair, and listen to the great music we have here on the show. And that's Worship Saturdays. One, Two more things I want to remind you of. Number one, download the app. It's called Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L. Available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. Yes, Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L. Available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. Download Podcast Portal. It is phenomenal and allows you to do all these wonderful things. Number one you can do is you can listen to the show straight from the app. You can also uh, get and like and comment on the straight from the app on the show. You can also look at the chapters when the show is done. It shows you everything that's being played on the show and everything that was spoken, the word, the, the, the message name, and everything. You can also download each and every episode of the show straight from uh, Portal Podcast Portal. And if you want someone to hear something that we talked about, all you got to do is download the episode. And you send it to them right straight then and there. Also, guys, what you can do is connect with us. Connect with us through Facebook, Twitter, and email. Yes, email. Here's a patented TGIF life hack. Go to the podcast portal, download it from the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market, and then open it up and go to the bottom right-hand corner of any page. It's an envelope picture. That's the email button. Click on the envelope picture. Click on your email client, and then click Always, and then type in your email and hit Send. It seems long, but see, you clicked Always. That way, when you go back to the email button again, just click the email. Since you that quick to the email, you type it in and you hit send. So it's 
So the first time you hit the, when you hit that always button, so the next time you go there, you just tap the email button, type in your email, hit send. That quick, and you're sending an email. See how much easier it is than C O M M U N I T Y C L O U D 222 at G M A I L dot C O M. See how much breath it takes to get out of there to say all that? But you don't have to do that. Click the email button. Click on your email client. Hit that always button. Type in your email and hit send. Next time you go there, click the email button. Type in your email. Hit send that quick and it's done. It's so quick you can snap your fingers twice and you're done. See, click the email button. Listen again. Click the email button. Type in your email. Send it. It's that quick and that easy. Also, guys, uh, you can connect with us through Facebook. You can message us on the Facebook Messenger app. We got the we got the blog. You can view straight from the the message the Facebook page where you can view all of the blog postings. So we're going to post all of our you know weekly messages. Like Doctor Scott's eventually will go on to the blog. Uh, Doctor, I. Uh, can't remember his name. I'll pass the lands or this Travis. And my show. If you guys want the words to each and every song, please let me know by downloading this episode or a episode. Let me know you want the words to the song also posted onto the show. Because I've been doing just the message shows. But if you want the words to the songs, let me know you want them. Download this episode or a episode. Let me know and I'll post those as well. Also, guys, right next, now on the bottom of each of the blog postings, it'll say uh, message me. You can type in a message there straight from your, uh, straight from the, uh, you got to log into uh, Messenger, but you can comment straight from there as well. Also, guys, there's, right next to where it says message, there's a phone handle button, a picture. Click on that phone handle picture, hit the green send button. And you're instantly calling us straight from the app. No more do you have to call one three zero two four four. You just hit that button and it sends you to one three zero two four four eight TGIF, right straight from the app. And you can message us on Twitter. But one of the best things that I like, one of the best things, not the best, one of the best things is the play buttons page, where you can click on four play buttons and actually play audio from them first one's 95 fight the fish from cleveland ohio it's a christian radio station and kjic out of texas another gos- country gospel christian radio station my former church evangel christian churches and my former church portage community chapel so click on the evangel button takes you to their their youtube page you click on their video and you can view anything and everything they've done but with Porridge Community Chapel, it's the, you'll see Evangel on that button. But on Porridge Community, it doesn't have their name on it per se. It just has an abstract looking green, brown, and yellow. It's colorful. Click on that button. takes you straight to their Vimo page. And you can view their Vimo videos of everything you do each and every single Sunday. So with that being said, you can listen to the play buttons. Now, you used to be able to do a Google search result at the bottom of the page. You can't no more. But on the bottom of Facebook and the bottom of Twitter, there is a search function that you can actually search the Internet. So if you do want to search something like we're talking about a topic you want to discuss or more information you want about it, click the search button at the bottom of the Facebook and Twitter, delete whatever is down there, and type in your own search. And it takes you right to it. With that being said, guys, also, guys, the best part of the app is the portal chat feature where you can, listen, where you can, where you can chat with everyone who owns the app. If 500 people own that app, you can chat with 500 different people. And you, the best part is you don't even have to have a, an account with it. You can just type in Susie or John or whatever the case is. Give me just a second. I'm about to sneeze. There we go. I might sneeze again, but that's okay. So you can put just a name and then hit continue and you instantly into the chat. Now, you can take a selfie with the chat as well. You can take a selfie, take your camera, take your selfie, save it to your camera roll, go into the app, go to portal chat, 
click the very camera at the bottom of the page and then click on upload picture click the picture you want to upload and hit send it's that easy but in order for you to chat or to send live pictures or pictures per se you have to number one be a member you have to have an account you can't just put in a name and, and send pictures you have to have a physical account with an email and a password just for your safety but the good thing is is that even though you can do that with an email and password half an account there's some security features to this because back when i had the original one you couldn't do none of that because guess what there's a back door and i had to have the email and password only because there's a back door and i didn't want ever, just anybody coming into the back door because all you had to do is type in tlk.io forward slash no tlk.io forward slash portal all capitals underscore underscore chat all capitals and you could get right into it from there and you can do whatever you wanted to and that was the thing i don't want something happening to with anybody in the chat feature so when i upgrade the chat feature i found this new one from one y99 chat that allowed me to do this with my uh with my uh with a html code allowed me to do so so that gave me the ability to uh, have more security now because now it's not listed anywhere on the internet the only way to the only way that you'll be able to get into this chat feature there's only two ways number one download the app and do it from the app itself number two if you don't already know then you should i have to give it to you so i am not giving it to nobody and the only way now that you can access the chat is through the app so now there are going to be people who are from the app and who are going to be doing some stuff they probably shouldn't be it's a given Nobody in this world is perfect. Nobody in this world, not everyone in this world is going to be Christian. They may think they are or might want to say they are, but they're not actually. Not everyone is Christian. So there's going to be some stuff that might arise. And let me know what's going on. If you see something you shouldn't see, let me know. I'll warn them. And if they do it again, I'll kick them off for a week. And if they do it a third time, they're gone for good. Three strikes and you're out, just like in baseball. Four, there's one, two. Three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. <laughs> that deserves a left track. Not only that, it's just I can't sing, so that deserves a left track too. With that being said, so you can even private message me or private message any of the users of the app. Just be safe. Like I said, not everyone is going to be actually Christian. They say they are, but they may not be. So just be safe. And there are people out there who pose. What does what the Bible say? That the devil comes in, comes like a wolf in sheep's clothing. So be careful. Just because someone says, I love God, and says they're Christian, doesn't mean they are. I was talking to a lady friend of mine who works at my last job. Don't need to say where it is. You probably already do know. But she came up, and I, we were talking with uh, one of my other workers there. And I said, yeah, but she don't listen to music I listen to. And she goes, well, what, what, what music do you listen to? And I said, I listen to Christian music. She goes, oh, okay, I, I like Christian music. She goes, I know some of the people who sing it. So she started looking them up. She goes, yeah, I know this person and that person. Yeah, you had to look them up. And the other worker goes, yeah, you had to look them up. And she instantly started playing Christian music. Instantly. The whole night. It was a miracle. And then the very next day, she was listening to something so filthy and talking such filthy language that you would you would think, what? She claimed, because she said, I, I love God. But then the very next day, went the exact opposite and listened to all that filthy garbage. So, I'm not going to say she was or she wasn't, but that just goes to show where their heart truly is. And when what the Bible says is, by their fruits you should know them. So, by their fruits, all this cursing and music, all this innuendo, innuendos of sex and all that stuff, do by her fruits, do I know her? Of course I do. I can tell what she is by her fruits. Now, it doesn't mean I have the right to say, go up to her and say, you're a sinner, you need, you, technically, I should. 
I should, but is she going to listen? No, because she's going to be like, well, I love God. I'm a Christian too. And then right then and there, what are you going to say? Are you going to argue with her? No, you just leave it alone. Because you already know what's going to happen, so why even give it a chance? Why try when it's just going to tear you down in the long run? With that being said, not everyone's going to be Christian. They, they're going to claim they are, but be, just be careful. Yes, you can private message people on the app, but be careful. Have fun, but ultimately be careful. Because not everyone in this world is going to be Christian, and no one is perfect. So just be careful. I don't monitor what people say. I don't care what they say on the app, as long as it's not racial, sexual, or anything like that. As long as they keep it clean. Now, clean doesn't mean that I'm a Democrat and I'm right, and you're Republican and you're wrong. I don't care what they say like that or anything. As long as it's not racial, it's not filthy, it's not dirty, there's no cussing. That's stuff that doesn't belong on the app. Now, I listen to some stuff that got some curse words in it. One of my favorite songs, I'll, I'll be honest with you, was Tupac. I ain't mad at you. But it has a good connotation to it. It has, good, it has a good storyline to it. His song had a storyline to it, to where it was his coming out of prison song. He, looks, he's like, he, he said, look, man, I ain't mad at you. I ain't got nothing but love for you. Do your thing, boy. So he ultimately is trying to say that everyone who snitched or whatnot or did what they did on him, like he ain't mad at them. He forgave them, basically. I got nothing love for you. Do your thing, boy. So he ain't mad at them. So I ain't mad at you is a, is a song that's got lots of curse words in it, but it's got a good meaning to it. Some of his songs got good meaning. Doesn't mean they're perfect. Like when he says... uh. Use a Muslim now, no more no games. I don't use the word Muslim, I use Christian. So it's got good connotation to it. It's not perfect. Is it something I should listen to on a regular basis when I worship God at church? Absolutely not. But does not mean I can't listen to it? No, it's a good song. It's his coming out of prison song and it has meaning to it. I like a song that has meaning to it. So that's just one of the songs that I actually like. But... When you're listening every day to filth garbage where they say drop it like it's hot and, you know, do this and do this and shake that what your mama gave you, these are all just cliche examples, just really poor examples, but you know what I mean. So with that being said, guys, that is Portal Chat. I mean, Podcast Portal. One last thing to remind you, ask your Alexa device, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal, and she'll say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. Rick, listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. And we also got the skill for your video Alexa devices as well. So, again, say Alexa, ask your Alexa device. Say Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our announcements for today. We are going to get into some hardcore praise and worship with this episode of Worship Saturdays. And let's start our first song with Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, but none other than Dr. Tom Ray, my friend and worship leader for over 19 years. Enjoy Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see.
There you go, guys. That was Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord, but none other than my friend and worship leader over 19 years, Dr. Tom Ray. Let's get into our next song, and our next song is That's the Kind of God That I Serve by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. Enjoy That's the Kind of God That I Serve.
stand up on his word. Come on, Dudley, you gotta sing it again.
There you go, guys. That was that's the kind of God that I serve. And how do I know that Jesus is good? Because that's the kind of God that I serve. Let's get the Lord to clap off on that note. Thank you all for being that kind of God that I serve. Let's get into our next song. Our next song is He's Been There by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Enjoy. He's Been There.
That, once again, guys, was he's been there by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Let me say this to you. He's been there. No matter what you are going through, he's been there. Whether you're battling drugs, alcohol, pornography, lust, gluttony, you know, love of money, whatever you're battling, whatever you're battling in your life, Jesus has been there. Now, doesn't mean he's been there physically. No, he's never lied, cheat, steal. He's never committed adultery. He's never committed a sin of homosexuality. He's never done anything wrong. And Jesus was perfect. Excuse me there. But he's been there in the spiritual sense because he died for lust. He died for pornography. He died for everything in the world. So has he been there physically? No. Spiritually, yes. Why? Because he put the weight of the world on his shoulders. The Bible said that he became sin for the world. The, the Bible never says he sinned, but he became sin for the world. And when he became sin, all that stuff about the veil was rent to, and the law was not done away with, but it was fulfilled. Why? Because Jesus knew and God knew we couldn't do it on our own. So he had to give Jesus for us to fulfill the law. Therefore, he's been there through everything you're going through right now. With that being said, guys, that was he's been there by none other than my friend for over 19 years, Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. Let's get into our next song. And our next song is entitled Children of the Lord Shine On by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Enjoy Children of the Lord Shine On.
There you go, guys. That was Children of the Lord China on by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Let's get into our next song, and it is entitled we'll Lift Him Up by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy, we'll lift him up. <laughs>
There you go, guys. That was We'll Lift Him Up by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Let's get into our next song. It's entitled Fall On Me by none other than my friend and worship leader for 19 years, Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy Fall On Me. Yeah. 